Hi everyone, LCC 150D stats for informed decision making. This week we're going to do two videos to cover chapter 5. Figure half would be as good because it gets to be a bit long and I know that you don't want to spend your whole evening watching YouTube videos of this. So we're going to focus this week on regression which is chapter 5 and again regression is a continuation of the correlation that we did last week. So let me give you some examples of correlation and regression graphs that are on the internet. Uh, here's when crime versus liberal voting tendency. And it's just a graph. It doesn't give us any values, but you can see that it does have a title. And it does have an X value, the liberal voting tendency. Uh, some scale, not sure what it is. FBI crime index per capita, 2002. So this person wanted to see if there was a tendency between more crimes and how people voted. So in case you are a liberal voter, do you happen to be in an area that is more crime or less crime? As a matter of fact, there is a study out that shows that the more Republican or less liberal type of voters, especially by states, have the higher crimes. So that may be why they are conservative. But we don't know that by just looking at this graph. Here's another example, gross motor skills, again, just taken off the internet, just copied. doesn't really say anything, but it does say gross motor skills are taught and at what age and the minimum developmental age and months. These are months on the left-hand side and years and see if there was a correlation there. Um, the next one is a kind of interesting one. It's a, This is an area in Germany, Bundesliga, I presume to pronounce it that way. But you can see that this person or these per people have decided to see if there was a relationship, a correlation between ticket price, the average ticket price, and the total goal scored by their football or soccer team. This is Europe. And to see if there was a relationship there. Um, and you can see, as I point here to the correlation, the point, but there's a line here. And that's going to be the regression line. That's what we're going to talk about this week. And there's another one, not the best graph because you don't know these values here. No labels, no title. If you pass this in, you're going to lose points, so be aware. So there is blood pressure reading and stress test score. And there's that line, but there's something a little bit different. This is called Y hat. Y equals 42.3 plus 0.49x. We're going to be looking at what that means as well. That's called a regression line equation. And that's an important part of your stats uh, course and something you'll be using for the rest of the semester. So this is what we have for linear regression. Let me escape out of this for a second and go on to the Excel chart from last week. Now here's the t thing we did last week, data and dating, and the correlation we found to be 0.57. I'm going to use this in a little while here to show you how to get a regression, what it means, and how you can avoid doing all of the uh, equations that are going to be listed in the chapter if you've read the chapter or about to read the chapter. So linear regression here, this is the uh, objective to quantify. That means put numbers to something. You can't just feel that there's a linear relationship. So if you look back on this one and without the lines, you probably wouldn't tell. Here, go right here. Is there a linear relationship here? Is there a line of some type? Can't really tell. So we're going to see if we can create a graph and a line that will give us a quantifying way to describe it. And we're going to compare these explanatory, that's the independent variable that goes on the x-axis, and the response variable, that's the y, that's the dependent, what depends on what. So that's the, what we're going to be comparing. And once you have the regression, you're going to have an equation. See this equation here? That's going to help you predict average responses for between the explanatory and response variables. So that's why we're going to learn how to create this line, regression line, and what do we do with this equation? What is this all about? So the next thing is we have a prediction here versus a via regression line. So this is just giving you the basic idea, the number of new birds and percent returning. So there seems to be a trend going down. Okay, there's a trend going down. And if you were doing a correlation, you'd get a negative correlation here. Okay, so this is the regression line describes the overall pattern of the relationship between percent of adults returning and the number of new birds. So it seems like the more the adult birds return, then you can see the less number of new birds 
that they have. So this predicted, this is a colony with 60% return in here. This is some type of indication with 60%. You can see the 60% here and about less than 15 number of birds. So you can predict this of the new adult birds that join a colony based on a percent of adult birds that return to the colony. So that's the example here. Okay? The way you do that is least squares. And least squares was developed by French mathematicians back in the 19th century. And uh, we're not going to go through the whole history of that, but you're trying to find the best line. If you ever took a course where you had to draw a graph and you had to make predictions, the, say like chemistry. Chemistry is usually a good course to draw a graph. And you have to draw a line and you have to draw it as best as possible. Well, you probably have to do that by hand if you're a certain age. Those younger people in the class have no clue what we're talking about. They're going to use Excel to do all that work. So you're lucky. You don't have to do this by hand. So you want the best line that goes through all these points. So you do that by least squares. And least squares means use the line that minimizes the sum of the squares of the vertical distances of the data points from the line. What the heck does that mean? Well, it means that you take these points and see how far they are vertically from the line. And there's some type of math that you can do. It's in the book, but you're not going to do that. Because that's not where our point is. Our point is to look at a graph and make a decision about it. So going back here, we're going to find the least squares regression line. And the equation that you get is this, y hat equals a plus bx. Now, if you remember from algebra, this is very similar. You had a y equals mx plus b. Very similar. And, but in stats, they, you have a different definition. We're not going to worry about these definitions so much as long as you know how this equation works. Where do these numbers come from? Y hat, this is from the, this is from the graph here. Let's go back to the graph to remind you. Okay, They found this equation by doing all of these numbers. And how did they get? What did they get? They got this y hat, y hat right there, equals 31.9343 minus 0.3040x. So this is the average number of new birds for all colonies with percent x returning. So when they do 60%, remember I said 60, it looks like it's a little less than 15 here. What is that exact number? Well, if you put in 60 for x, let's go back to the graph, 60 is here. That's the x-axis, that's the explanatory variable or the independent variable. The number of new birds is dependent on the percent of adults returning. Think about it. If you don't have a lot of adults returning, you may not have a lot of new birds, but let's see what happens. So going back to this equation, with 60 returning, we get 13.69 birds. Now you know you're not going to get 13.69. So you might want to round that off. You might get 13 birds, not close to 14. So that's what we use the equation line for. Okay, and here's the regression line calculation. It's based on these variables. And you can spend a lot of time looking at this. But we're not going to do that. So get away from this focus for a second. We're going to go to the Excel chart that we did last week. This was data on dating. Reminder, this was the women's heights. These were the men's heights. This was the correlation. Not very strong, if you recall, 0.57. But we're going to see if we, there's a line that goes through that. So here's the line. If we put a, our cursor right on a point, we're going to right-click and get a menu. Let me do that again. So you get a point, you put the, right, the, the arrow right on a point. Okay, you can see by the point. Right-click, and it says add a trend line. There's your menu. This is a linear this button should be highlighted. So that's a linear line. And then you go to the bottom, and we're closing that, and there's the line. It really doesn't say much, but it is a line. Okay, that's the best line that you can draw, and it takes all the sum of the squares, the least squares, all that equation. It does it all for you. So there's your line. But again, it doesn't say much. So now we're going to do it again. Go to a point, and go to that menu that says Add Trend Line. We already drew the line, but it, down here at the bottom says display equation on chart. That's what we want. So we click that, and there's the equation. So let's move that, if we can, move it up here so we can see it a little bit better. And there's the equation. That means y equals 0.6818x plus 24. So y happens to be the men's height here, and the x is the women's height. 
over here. So the men's heights depends on women's heights for dating. That's what we have here, so that's what we're going to use. Okay, and that's the equation. Now, in our range, we range from 63 inches for women to 71 inches for women on the x-axis. So that's our range. So if you wanted to do a prediction, you could say, okay, if a woman was uh, about 63 and a half inches, then what would the men's height be, the corresponding men's height? Then you would just put an x, 63 and a half, solve for y, and you get your answer. We'll be doing that in the next lesson. So that's what you get there. Now, as part of the information that we get, and I'm going to skip down here, I will come back to this in a second, is the coefficient of determination r squared, r squared value. Let me tell you that it's not as difficult as it sounds over here. The square of the correlation, all you do is take your correlation squared, measures what fraction of the variation in the values of the response variable is explained by the regression line. That sounds really exciting. So, regression line explains all of the variation in y. So, this line explains all of the variation. That's taken the sum of the squares and explained all. The r squared value, the regression line explains, and if it's a value of 0 0.7, 0 0.49, it, puts, it pertains only to 50%. So, let me explain it in our chart. Let's go back to a point, right click, add trend line. See, it says display r squared value on chart. Let's do that. Click. Here's the R squared value. Let's bring it up. Uh, let's go over here. That's 0.3196. That's saying about 32% of the variables are explained by this line. Not very good. All right? And remember, it's a square the correlation. So if we square this 0.57, you'll get 0.31, actually 0.32. And that tells you that this line, although it's a trend line, it's not a very good trend line. So to predict men's heights and in inches to women's heights and in inches is not very good using this data because the correlation is so weak. So that's your decision you have to make. You're probably going to get some data and graph it. Now you can add a trend line, find an equation, find the R squared value. All this information should give you an idea on whether this is a very strong set of data to use in future projects or so on. And so that's what I'm trying to have you realize is what are you going to do with this data and, and the results from this data. So that will be it for this one. It will be short and I'm going to do another one uh, on Chapter 5 to show you what you can, how you can use this stuff.